It's the book of Alpha running me, nigga. Read it or weep. The incidence of infidelity is even higher when you're really not that into the woman or if they not really feeling your ass. So if you with somebody that ain't really feeling you, the chances, the, you know, the chances of infidelity are already there. But if they ain't really feeling you, then you might as well go and chalk it up to the game. Man, I say this, man, strap up, strap up with everybody, strap up with everybody. Strap up with everybody. Strap up with your girlfriend. Strap up with your wife. Strap up with your main chick. Strap up with your side chick. Nigga, strap up when you masturbate. Always strap up. Don't take no chance. Not even with your own hand. Strap up. Because if you are in a situation with somebody your ass ain't even getting along with, man, believe me, man, that somebody is getting with them. They are getting with somebody. That's a guarantee. Man, we in a society now, we in an over-sexualized environment where if anybody's having problems in their relationship, they just go get that stress relieved by having sex with somebody else. That's how that's, that's how it goes now. They just go get that situation, they just go get it handled by having sex with somebody else. Or, listen, let me tell you something, and I'm a firm believer in this. <clears throat> if, you, if, if your woman is fantasizing about me while she masturbating, then she's really having sex with me because women live in a fantasy world. So if your woman is fantasizing about me while she's masturbating, she is having sex with me in her mind. It is so realistic in her mind. She may dream about me that night. And if she dreams about me and it's so realistic that she actually has an opportunity to get off because she's dreaming about me, guess what? Your woman has just had sex with me. Now, I'm telling you like this. If your woman has a sex toy, I promise you, I promise you. I promise you that your woman ain't sitting there thinking about nothing blank and thin air trying to have sex with herself with a sex toy. No, she is fantasizing about someone. Women live in a fantasy world. And when she is fantasizing with her sex toy, it is probably not about your ass. And that's the reality of it. I ain't making nothing up. I ain't telling you some man that don't nobody know. I'm just keeping it 100 with you, man. That's all I'm doing. So you have to understand, man, that there is no reason for you to ever be in a situation believing that believing that fidelity is a guaranteed part of a relationship. It's simply not a guaranteed part of a relationship. So you have to understand the incidence of infidelity is higher when you're really not that into your mate or if they're not feeling you. If you're arguing all the time, y'all ain't feeling each other. If y'all spend more time not touching than you do, than, than, than you spend touching, y'all ain't feeling each other. Because I'm going to be honest with you, man. When I got a bad little chick around me, man, and I'm feeling her and she feeling me, I swear, man, we can't keep our hands off each other, man. It is always physical. Always physical. It's physical in public. You know, I don't mind PDAs, man, because I don't give a damn what nobody think. If I'm feeling a little chick, man, like you finna see some PDA. I'm talking about some real PDA. You know what I'm saying? You catch me in the wrong spot, man, you probably finna see a full-fledged flick go on, man. That's just me. Everybody ain't got to be like that, but I can guarantee you that if there's more, if there's more angst going on than there is, than there is sexual touching, than there is sexual energy, than there is intimate attachment, intimate energy, I can guarantee you, man, that somebody's getting touched on, man. And if it ain't you, then it's her. That's the reality of it, man. If you're just joining me, man, this is the High Altitude Show. I'm your host with the most, Dr. B-O-A, a.k.a. Book of Alpha running me. Now, when an environment lacks both passion and compassion, think about this. Passion is just what I was just talking about. There is no intimacy. There is no intimate connection. There is, listen, there's one thing to get into it and have some amazing makeup sex. It's another thing to get into it and then not even want to be bothered with each other, which, which, which each other were gone. And then when there's no compassion, that means that, man, if you, when you go out into the world and have that terrible day, man, out there fighting the demons of the world, man, trying to secure the bag for your family. And when you come in the career, man, your woman is indifferent. She ain't got nothing to say, man. She ain't giving you none of that, none of that tender loving kindness, man, that she will put here to give you. And you just find yourself in a situation where she ain't giving you nothing, but you got to see her every day. Why? Who, man, listen. It's already tough enough to be around a woman every day. How the hell are you going to be around a woman every day that ain't giving you no positive energy? What's her purpose? If she ain't giving you no positive energy, 
Y'all ain't being intimate. Y'all ain't, man, you crazy, man. You better get out of this situation. It, it just creates a big, terrible dynamic for everyone involved. When you're in a situation with somebody your ass don't even like. You know what I'm saying? When you're in a situation, a relationship, a situation, ship, cohabitation situation with someone that is wrong for you. Someone that you don't get along with, someone you don't like, they don't like you. It's just a situation that's just there. Everybody feels that energy. She's always complaining to her people. You always talking about her to your homies. You know what I'm saying? She's hanging out with her people more. You hanging out with your people more. So then y'all spending more and more time away from each other, which is great time. And then when y'all get back together under the same roof, it's like misery. It's like y'all finding more and more time to stay away from home. If you got to try to stay away from home, that's why certain men be doing things like, man, they have truck driving jobs. Let me tell you something. There are men who had great paying executive positions. And man, just got tired of their old lady, man. Went and bought a truck, man. Just started driving trucks. Just stay away from home. Just to stay away from home. Would take business trips, man. And if they didn't lead the corporate sector, man, they would take every business trip and they would lobby for business trips. Hey, Jones, can you take this trip? No, no, I'll take it. Don't worry about it. Jones. Go ahead and stay with your family, man. I know you got a family. Nigga, you got a family too. Uh, my family, all right, man. I'll take this trip. They be trying to stay away from home as long as they can. And I tell a woman out there right now, if your husband drives trucks or he does uh, he's he's in the, the the reserve, you know, the military reserves or something that keeps him away from home, and he can't wait to get, leave and get away from your ass. That tells you a lot about yourself. It tells you a lot about yourself and how you don't have as good a hold on the situation as you think you do, or how you're not having, you know, you don't have the connection that you think you have. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, if a woman is at the career, if a, a man is at the career, man with a woman, man that he actually loves to be around. Man, he trying to be around her as much as he can, man. As much as he can. We live in an overly sexualized environment where at every corner, if you with somebody that's attractive, and hopefully you are, then at every corner, they're going to be approached by the opposite sex. And just to be honest with you, let me tell you like this. No matter how handsome you are, you ain't the only handsome motherfucker in the world. And woman, no matter how beautiful you are, you're not the only beautiful woman in the world. And you're probably not the most beautiful woman in the world. And you, homie, you're probably not the most handsome man in the world. You're probably not the most. And the thing is, you may appear to be that because of the emotional connection, because they actually like you, because they caught up with you, because there's an energy there. But take that energy away and think about how likely it is for you or your mate to end up being intimate with someone else. I mean, the likelihood is there, man. It is there. You are generally stressed out and feel trapped in an emotional prison when you're in this situation. It creates stress. You see, there's only two types of environment you can be in. An environment that is full of stress and an environment where there is peace of mind. There is no in-between. No matter what environment you're in, it is either going to be more stressful or more peaceful. There is no middle ground where it's, it's, it's fairly, it's equally stressful and peaceful. No, that's not how that goes. Peace and stress cannot exist equally in an environment. They cannot coexist in an environment. It is either one or the other because they're both so strong. They, they both, once they're in the environment, they permeate the environment. The environment is engulfed in either peace or stress. And when you're in a situation with somebody your ass don't want to be around, man, it is stress all day. Because let me tell you what you do. You sit and nitpick things about them. You know what I'm saying? Like if, she, if your girl got a long chin, you start looking at her like, man, you, man, that's a long chin, bitch. She's long chin ass, man. Get out of here, man. Fuck around, get a blade, man. Cut the bottom end of that long, long guy. See? That type of thing. You know, that type, man, man, you start focusing on all types of little things, man, that really don't even mean nothing because you detest the presence of this person, man. You don't want them around. You hate to see them. You hate to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be text by them. You don't want to be called by them. It gets to the point where you don't answer their call. They don't answer your call. They'll call your ass back, man, like, like three hours later. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of scenario it is, man. Like, you have to understand, man, when you're in this situation, the best thing you could ever do is get out of it. And let me tell you something like this, man. If you're worried about what you're going to lose, if you get, now this is for me, because a woman ain't going to lose shit if she get out of it. 
when you get out, when you look in that situation, man, that you should be out of and trying to figure out reasons to stay in it, when you know it ain't good for you, man, you're thinking like a beta male simp mangina. A woman is not going to stay with your ass when she knows a situation ain't good for her. The very moment she realizes that this situation ain't good for me no more, she going to start making moves to get out of it. And you know what her first move is when she's trying to get out of it? To find somebody else to rebound with. A woman is never going to leave a situation, a long-term relationship, and go off and be by herself. She may not enter into another serious relationship, but trust me, there is going to be somebody there to soften her landing. Trust me. Some nigga is going to be a trampoline or a stack of mattresses. You're going to be some. Somebody going to be some. A swimming pool of water. You're going to be something. When she, when she jump off that relationship cliff, she going to have a soft landing. Men don't really have soft landings like that. Because let me tell you what men do in these situations. In the breakup, especially after a long-term relationship, if you've amassed some material things, some finances, then you start to feel weak in the breakup, especially if you're married. In a divorce, men assume a position of weakness in a divorce just based on the laws themselves. Unless you gutter and you're willing to put the hitters out on her. Other than that, if you're going through this court thing, you take a weakened position. So in your mind, you're less likely to go off and have a woman to make your landing soft. Because you're trying to present this image as this wonderful man who is not what this woman is making you out to be. While this woman is going on with her life and she's being promoted and coerced into doing that, supported in that endeavor by this society. You have to understand that, man. So whatever you think you're dealing with in the situation, she's dealing with the total opposite. She ain't got to try to present herself as this clean, this, this woman who is so in love with you and it's hard for her to move on. She ain't got to do that because in the divorce, she is already viewed as the damn victim. Think about it. In most divorces, it's very rare in a divorce that the woman is not the plaintiff. Remember, 80% of divorces are filed by women. She's always the plaintiff. And in, and in times where you filed a divorce, now she's the victim. It, ain't, it don't matter that you was unhappy in the situation. It's the fact that you leaving her with the children. You leaving her to fend for herself. You leaving her to not have a man in the house to secure the blah, blah, blah. You wah, 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 wah. You're doing all of this. So no matter who files the divorce, she is in the position that is viewed as the positive position while you are viewed as the dirty damn dog. That's what you are. That's why Jeff Bezos is getting such a hard time. Because Jeff Bezos already got him a girlfriend. But Jeff Bezos said, hey, man, if the, if the most I got to lose is six to $8.5 billion, guess what? By time, by the time, this is all over. When she get her six to, 8 .6, well, six to $8.5 billion, I'll be right back worth $100 billion again. That's what he banking on. He banking on her just getting half. If she get half of everything... He just banking on her getting half and taking her name off everything. She take her half of everything and that is it. Her name comes off everything. They are not business partners in things anymore. Everything that can be split in half is split in half. And he goes on with Amazon and keeps grinding and blowing up. Same thing Michael Jordan did. He's worth 300 million, gave his wife 150 million. Now he's worth 1.6 billion. You know what she's worth? I think like 171 million, which ain't bad. It ain't bad for a woman to get 150 million dollar way back then. And now be worth 171, 171 million. Because that means even with her expenditures throughout life, their children were already gone off to college. He ain't paid no child support. He ain't paid no spousal support. The fact that she was able to turn that into 21 more million dollars and still live shows that she's a pretty good hustler there, man. But still, that's not the point. And my bad for giving her ass credit for building up, for building up 21 million off 150 million. Hell, I can do that. I put 21 million worth of bricks on the street. So I'm just joking, man. No, don't take that literally. I wouldn't dare put no work on the streets. So you are generally stressed out and feel trapped in an emotional prison. You can't get out. She's draining you emotionally, but giving you nothing in return. Because as a man in the situation, being the stronger vessel you are not trying to create a combative environment with a woman. You're just not trying to create it. So you're trying to go along to get along while she's being more and more facetious every damn day. 
She's being more and more crazy. She's been more and more combative. She's been more and more adversarial every damn day. Because let me tell you what happens, man. And this is the reality of it. You got to know when a woman wants you to leave her. You got to know when she wants you to leave her. The only thing more life altering than beginning a long term relationship. Let's, let's think about beginning a long term relationship. When you begin a long term relationship. It's life altering. It changes the way you've lived your entire life. It changes the selfish nature of your life. It changes the focus of your life. It causes you to embrace someone else's ideology for the entirety of your life. Because to be perfectly honest with you, when you begin a long-term relationship, you don't know how long it's going to last. You don't know if it's going to last the rest of your life. It probably won't unless you die young. And since you don't know when you're going to die, it could last the rest of your life. So you're basically saying that, because this is the thing, you're going to stay in it as long as it works. So if it works forever, you're going to stay in it forever. By and large, people don't leave relationships that are working. If the relationship is working, you're going to stay in it as long as it's working. So you pretty much invite somebody's ideology, somebody's expectations into your life for the rest of your life. Nothing alters your life more than that. A lot of times you go into a man, your homies still be your homies, but y'all don't hang out like you, like you used to. You don't do the things you used to, man. You don't hang out and enjoy yourself by yourself like you used to. Your life becomes, your life goes from being me, myself, and I to us. That's a big ass change. Now, the only change, the only change, more life altering than that, is ending a long term relationship. And it's even tougher to end a long term relationship. Because when you're going into a long-term relationship, there's an excitement there. No one enters a long-term relationship is there if there's not an excitement there. An excitement to be with this person that you enjoy so much. An excitement with being around this person. An excitement with knowing that, you know, this person right here, man, you can hit her up whenever you, whenever you need her. She's going to be right there. There's an excitement there. It's new. Hey, man, I don't really know this person. This is going to be a great experience, man. Being able to wake up to some slow head whenever I feel like it. You know, being able to go down and see her in the kitchen cooking with her little boy shorts on. Then over the counter, pull them to the side. There's going to be amazing things going on in your mind because there is a situation that you can create. It's a fantasy world. Whenever you as a man enter into a long-term relationship, your ass is entering into a fantasy world, homie. You're a man entering into a fantasy world. And you may say, well, what's wrong with that, Mr. BOA? Doctor, what is wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with that. You're a man. You don't know how to navigate the fantasy world. You don't know how to control the fantasy world. You don't know how to build a fantasy for yourself. You can only build a woman's fantasy because she lets you know what the hell her fantasy is. So it's easy to create a fantasy world for a woman because she tells you what her fantasy world is. As a man, you don't even have a fantasy world. So you're about to put yourself into a fantasy world that belongs to her. And guess what? She been living her whole damn life and she ain't been able to create that fantasy world. Her whole damn life, she ain't been able to create that fantasy world. Now what the hell make you think she finna have any input into the fantasy world except telling you if you're doing it right or not? That's not it. That's what her job is in the fantasy world. It's you're the fantasy builder. She creates the fantasy you build it. You, create, you, you, you make the fantasy come to fruition. And that's what you do when you're in a long-term relationship. Because as a man, you don't want that shit. No man in the world really wants a long-term relationship. If I tell you what, if any you tell any man in the world, you can have all the benefits of a long-term relationship, but you ain't even got to be in it. What man going to say, no, 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 that's not fair. If I'm going to receive all the benefits of a long-term relationship, let me go ahead and be in it. Tell her to come on, move in right now. Who the hell going to do that? What man you know going to get all the benefits of being in a, in a, in, in a long-term relationship but still be single is going to say, no, I will not do that. If you're going to give me those benefits, I'm going to do it the right way. Ain't no nigga on the planet going to say that. Because we don't really want to be in a long-term relationship. We just want what we perceive as the benefits of being in a long-term relationship. What are those benefits? Exactly. And if you want to get all of those benefits from one woman, yes, you might have to be in a long-term relationship with her. But if you want to get those benefits, and it may take three or four women to give you all of those benefits, guess what? 
You are much happier man with a much happier life and much more peace of mind in your everyday environment because I know a lot of men, but only pimps. Um, I'm talking about real live pimps that got women out there working. They're the only ones I know that got four or five women living with them at one time. I know plenty of men that have two, but four or five, not so much. You see what I'm saying? And even those pimps, man, as soon as they can, as soon as they get situated, man, they get their own spot and let all them chicks live in a spot together. Uh, listen, bro, I'm telling you the reality of it. Her fantasy world is for you to be with just her. That shit ain't your fantasy. You embrace her fantasy because you start to care about what it takes to make her happy. You start to care about what it takes to keep a smile on her face. You start to care about what it takes to bring her joy, even if it means taking your own joy away. You have to understand, man, that when you end a life, a long term relationship, None of that excitement is there. There's misery replacing that excitement because you can't get over the fact that the thing that you thought was so exciting in the beginning has been such a monumental waste of time, energy, and resources. So you go into, go back into your single life. Man, you ain't happy. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, even when you tell yourself this is a good thing, even though you know it's a good thing, you still can't overcome the fact that you wasted all that time. That's the number one thing I tell men to get over. That's the number one thing that causes men to stretch the hell out and blow their brains out. It's because they think about the wasted time that they won't get back. They think about all the things that happen when they, they I mean, they, they really, really can't understand how they didn't see it. So it's not the fact that the man feels so bad toward the woman. It's the fact that the man is viewing himself saying, how could I have been such a fool? I'm going to tell you how you could have been such a fool. Because your woman was so beguiling. She was so slick with her lies, with her deceit. Deception is her perfection, man. That's what she does. So the first thing I tell men is, man, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for being stupid. Because you weren't stupid. Forgive yourself. For not getting out of that situation when you knew you should have. See, the stupid part ain't being in the situation. The stupid part ain't being misused and abused and taken for granted. That's not the stupid part. The stupid part is once you realize that that's what's taking place, not getting out of it. There is no good reason to keep yourself in a situation that is destroying you, man. No good reason. No one can tell me any good reason. No one can tell me any good reason. At all. To stay in a situation that's making you miserable. I don't give a damn. You get down to one penny. Where you got, I'm talking about not, not a little bit of money. I'm talking about one penny. It's better to have one penny in peace than to have a meal ticket and you feel like every day you're about to have a heart attack. And, and another thing about this, man, you simply cannot ever grasp the concept. And this is something that all men suffer with coming out of the back end of long-term relationships. You never can grasp the concept that everything you thought about this woman was wrong. Everything you thought about her was wrong. As different as you thought she was. She was just the same as every other woman. And sometimes even worse than average. But you think you can never get over the fact that there was a time where you thought she was so different. Because when you look back, this is, the, this is the tough thing to overcome. When you look back, she never even gave you a reason to believe that she was different. You assumed on your own that she was different. Maybe because she said she was. That is why, men, I say... Actions speak louder than words. Ignore her words. It doesn't matter what she says, good or bad. Ignore her words. Women tell me all the time how wonderful I am. I'm like, bitch, I don't need you to tell me how wonderful I am. I told myself that when I first woke up in the morning and looked in the mirror. And I believe me more than I believe you. I don't need you to back up my claim. I don't need to hear that. I don't need to hear how wonderful my energy is, how you love my alpha energy, how cold I am, how I'm so different. I know I'm different. I'm the only, I'm, hell, I'm the only BOA I ever met. I know I'm different, but that means nothing because you're different too. There's no other you. Y'all may be similar, but there's no other you. They say everybody in the world got a twin, not me. Cain and Abel, homie, Cain and Abel. 
Took him out when we were kids. My twin don't live no more, man. I took him out early. She ain't lately. It was good, bro. So I say, man, the worst part, it's, it's like the saying says, man, the worst part of marriage is divorce. The number one cause of divorce is marriage. The worst part of marriage is divorce. And the worst part of long-term relationship is ending them. Because I promise you, man, ain't nothing you can do about all the time you throw away. It gets to the point where we try to, we, we start thinking like women. Well, at least, I got a, at least I got a child out of that situation. That shit ain't good. It ain't good to get a child out of a situation that your ad didn't want to be in. Because I'm going to be honest with you, man. The reality of it is this. Whatever energy you and that woman share, that's the energy that's going to come out of your child, man. That's the energy your child is going to embody. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be honest with you. I say this, if you if your woman's pregnant right now, regardless of what you've done in the past, regardless of how what y'all, regardless of any of that, while she's pregnant, create that fantasy world for her. Create that perfect fantasy for her so your child can have healthy energy, man. You must do that. Trust me, you won't regret it, man. Create even if you're gonna break up with her later. Create that positive energy while she's carrying your seed, man. I mean, if you're pretty sure it's your seed. If you don't know, if you have doubts, then maybe you shouldn't put forth this level of effort. But I mean, if you're pretty sure it's your seed, man, nobody can be 100% sure. But if you're pretty sure it's your seed, then go ahead, man, and create that fantasy world for her while she's carrying your seed, man. Because you don't want any of that stress, man, to come through in your seed, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the reality of it. Chris Cately, what's good? Freddie Dunbar, what up, homie? So, like I stated earlier, man, you never get to waste of time, resources, or emotional investment back. You know what I'm saying? And you think about, especially in divorce, man, think about, man, like Jeff Bezos, he's saying, man, yeah, six day billion ain't nothing. I can go on with my life. But when he says six day billion, man, then his wife already old and ugly. Then he see her, man, and she a cougar, and she breaking bread, tossing all the bread away on some little dude. Now, he may be the type, man, that can be like, okay, that's her money now. A lot of men can't. Me, I could be like that. I could be like, man, I don't care what that bra does, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't care what she does. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, man, I'm worth $68 billion. And my name still ring bell. When you think about Amazon, you think about my name. My name still ring bells. And I'd be cool with that. This dude has a, an aerospace company, man. Man, they, man, they talking about making shuttles to go to the moon, man. They talking about traveling to Mars, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you have to understand, man, that this is just par for the course when you get into this relationship thing, man. Super T Sigma, what's good, bro? But not Benjamin, what up, B? I see you in the building, man. Now think about this, man. Another thing is damn near everyone lets themselves go in a relationship setting. Women are more likely than men to let themselves go. But at some point, if you're in a long-term relationship, at some point, man, you let yourself go. The excitement of being on top of your game is gone when you're in a long-term relationship, man. When the relationship is new, the excitement of being on top of your game is still on, man. You still, you know, you still feel it. But I'm going to be honest with you. When you're in this situation where you're with the wrong person, the excitement of staying on top of your game quickly wears off, man, because you find so much negative energy from the opposite sex. If you're around a woman every day that you detest, her presence ruins your day, then you can't view women from a positive perspective unless you're just leeching energy from them. Like you may go to work and the women give you positive energy, energy there, you just leech their energy. You don't even want to be with them intimately. You just leech their energy because you need some positive feminine energy. And I'm perfectly honest with you, man. And you have to get positive feminine energy from other women because all your woman is giving you is negative energy. Man, you need to wake up tomorrow tomorrow and leave that bro i don't care if you got to go stay in an extended stay hotel man you need to get up tomorrow and leave that bro put your shit in a storage if you ain't prepared to make no move right now put your stuff in a storage and move right now man you got to get the hell away from her what's the purpose of having her around man if she ain't giving you nothing 
Like this video on your way out if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. When you subscribe, click that notification bell. Make sure your notifications are on so you can be alerted to when I upload some more of this real And as always, alpha's up, beta's down. Peace.